Welcome to Lectures on the Basics of Biblical Greek. Chapter 7 The Genitive and Dative Cases of the First and Second Declension Nouns We begin with a bit of review of the form of the Greek noun. A Greek noun consists of a stem and a case ending. The case ending provides two bits of information. First of all, the case, namely how the Greek noun is used in the sentence, and the number, whether the noun is singular or plural in form. Each Greek noun will have its own gender. Often the declension will be helpful in remembering the gender, but uh, not always. Sometimes the gender is the opposite of what is expected. This gender is grammatical gender and not natural gender. We have learned to distinguish the first and second declensions by the vowel that ends the stem. First declension nouns will have stems that end in either alpha or eta, whereas second declension nouns will have stems ending in omicron. To these stems, the case endings are added. For the nominative singular, in the second declension, sigma, in the first declension, nothing, and in the second declension, neuter, a new. For the accusative singular, all examples add news to the stem. In the nominative plural, yoda and yoda are added to masculine and feminine uh, first and second declension nouns, and uh, alpha is added to uh, the second declension neuters. The case ending for the accusative case is upsilon sigma in the mas masculine second declension, uh, sigma in the first declension, and alpha uh, in the second declension neuter. When put together with the stem vowel, one uh, can begin to see how uh, the case endings form out. Omicron sigma, that's a second declension masculine. Eta or alpha, the endings in the feminine, first declension for nominative. And omicron neuter, nu for the neuter, uh, interestingly both in the nominative and accusative singular. We do have a, a bit of an unusual formation in the nominative and accusative neuter plurals. You'll see the stem vowel, the omicron, has disappeared, having been totally swallowed up by the long alpha. In the case of the formation of the other uh, uh, declensions, it's just adding the ending to the stem vowel. The result is our entire paradigm here. The nominative singular line, logos, word, graphe, writing, hora, writing, or er, hour, and ergon, neuter, and so forth. So again, the nominative and accusatives are formed by adding the appropriate uh, case ending to the stem vowel. And in one case, the neuter plurals, both nominative and accusative, the ending completely supplants the stem vowel. Last time we also learned the definite article for the nominative and accusative singular and the nominative and accusative plural. The definite article always agrees with the noun it modifies in case, gender, and number. It never lies, and that can be helpful with those rare forms where we have a second uh, or a first declension masculine, for example. Um, the um, the ending will look like its first declension, but the article will be masculine. It also does help, um, the article does, in uh, sorting out forms that could be ambiguous, uh, such as between the accusative singular masculine and the accusative singular neuter. The ch chart before you puts together all the forms, the article plus the noun, in the various cases that we have learned so far. And notice in particular, in the accusative singular, 
logon and ergon have the same endings, but if one forgot the, uh, the genders of, of either, the article ton tells you that logon is masculine, and ta tells you, the reader, that uh, ergon is neuter. In today's lesson, we'll add the other two major cases, the genitive and dative. We'll talk about how those cases function and introduce the uh, keyword for each case. Then we'll look at the case endings, the definite article and full paradigm, as we've done before. We'll then have a couple of words about noun rules and uh, two other variations on the paradigms that uh, you will run into. Uh, in the Greek New Testament. So here we go. First of all, the genitive case. Uh, the genitive case uh, carries those uh, meanings that we use the possessive case for in English. Uh, possession in English is shown by uh, using of, the book of the girl, or by adding an apostrophe s. The girl's book. In Greek, possession is shown by using the genitive case ending. So if we were going to show the possessive of God in English, we'd say of God. In Greek, we would go from theos to theou. Notice how the case ending is different. Now, the genitive in Greek usually follows the noun it modifies as is the case in English constructions that use of to show possession. So the word of God would be the rendition of the uh, Greek that you see there, ha logos tu theu, although one could also render it God's, apostrophe s, word. Both would be correct. The dative case covers a much wider range of meaning especially when the dative occurs all by itself. The key word that we'll typically use for the dative case is to, but we could also use for or in or with. Uh, we'll use the dative case to convey indirect object. That is when an object is indirectly affected by an action. He hit the ball to her would be an example of indirect object. Notice, with the example given, auto, uh, that's the dative singular, and it means to him. So, when one runs into a genitive case, one will add the keyword of in front of it as an initial help for translation. If one runs into a dative case, uh, add the keyword to in front of it to provide an initial translation translation. This slide shows you uh, the entire uh, case ending chart for the first and second declensions. Um, typically in such charts the genitives and datives are listed in between the nominative and accusatives. So uh, uh, case ending charts will typically be nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, singular, and then nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, plural. The new endings that we're learning uh, across are for the genitive singular, upsilon, sigma, upsilon. For the dative singular, singular, yoda, yoda, yoda. For the genitive plural, omega nu, omega nu, omega nu. And for the dative plural, yoda, sigma, yoda, sigma, yoda, sigma. In some ways, these case endings are easier uh, because there's so much repetition, easier than uh, the ones we learned previously. But some tricky things happen. First of all, there is a bit of ambiguity. As the genitive singular masculine and the genitive singular neuter are identical in form. Likewise, the dative singular masculine and the dative singular neuter the genitive plural masculine, the genitive plural neuter, and the dative plural masculine, and the dative plural neuter. The genitive and datives of masculine and neuters are uh, identical 
in their respective cases. This chart adds the stem vowel to the case ending. And although it's fairly clear how this works in a number of cases, such as the genitive singular, there you have upsilon sigma upsilon added to the case ending vowels. The same is true of the dative plural, yoda sigma added to the case ending vowel. There are some problems or um, unusual circumstances with the dative singular and the genitive plural. First of all, for the dative singular, you will notice that the yoda subscripts under the stem vowel. In fact, the yoda generally does it. The yoda in the dative singular will subscript when at all possible. So we have eta with the yoda subscript and alpha with the yoda subscript. However, sometimes when that subscripting occurs, the length of the vowel will change. And in the dative singular masculine and dative singular neuter, the omicron has lengthened to omega. Uh, this process is called ablauting, and it is something that does happen with Greek vowels. They can change their length, and at times they can even disappear. For us at this point, we need to note that in the dative singular, masculine and neuter, the omicron ablauts to an omega as the yoda is subscripted. In the genitive plural, omega nu is added uh, to the stem. However, because omega is a long vowel, it swallows up the stem vowel. So the on the omicron and the alpha simply disappear, and the ending is just omega nu. This chart provides um, examples of paradigm words from uh, the, the two declensions uh, with the case endings added. If we look, for example, at uh, logos, which is a second declension masculine, you get logos, logu, logo, logon, logoi, logon, logois, logus. Remember, again, the stem vowel disappears um, in the dative singular and the, uh, excuse me, the stem vowel lengthens in the dative singular to an omega before the yoda subscripts and it disappears before the omega in the genitive plural. Uh, the same thing occurs with ergon, the second declension neuter. It follows the same pattern. The only difference is in the nominative and accusative uh, plurals. We have an alpha. And the nominative and accusative singulars have a nu. Uh, in the uh, first declension, uh, the, uh, the, the subscripting is visible in the dative singular and the omega swallowing up the alpha uh, in the genitive plural. It is very important that a student of beginning Greek master the definite article because there is more precision in the definite article than there is in the case endings for, uh, for the sake of parsing. And the other nice thing is these first and second declension definite articles are used with the third declension, a much more difficult system, and are key to sorting out that system. So I encourage you to, mast to master these by heart. Ha, he, ta, tu, te, tu, to, te, to, Ton tain ta, hoi hai ta, tone tone tone, tois tais tois, tus tas ta. Repetition is recommended. With the full paradigm, the help 
of the uh, article um, uh, becomes obvious. We've already noted the difference between the accusative singular masculine and the ac accusative singular neuter, the help that's provided by the article, ton versus ta. Another place where the article helps very much is between the genitive singular of the first declension and the accusative plural. For example, horas in the genitive singular could that form by itself could also be accusative plural. But one has a tase article for the genitive singular and a tas article for the accusative plural. Unfortunately, the genitive plural is no help whatsoever. Uh, the, uh, the article is the same no matter the case, or excuse me, no matter uh, the declension. Uh, one simply has to know uh, the vocabulary and the gender of each vocabulary word in order to get parsing uh, correctly uh, in, uh, in this particular case. Of course, identifying a form and translating it are two different things. We've already alluded to the key words that one will use with the genitive and dative cases. With a nominative and accusative case, we focused on subject of the sentence and direct object. That's a matter of putting it into English word order. But the genitive and dative, there we need key words. So, uh, remember, the genitive, uh, when it is functioning as a possessive, typically follows the word it modifies, and so it's best to translate of that keyword, plus the root meaning of the word, singular or plural. Similarly, dative, um, tr translate the keyword to, or sometimes for, and then the root meaning of the word, either singular or plural, depending on the case ending. At least this is a place to start with translation. As we go on in be beginning Greek, you will find that there are many, many other uses of the genitive and dative. But there are also other syntactic elements that indicate these other uses. And right now we're dealing with very simple sentences. So stick with these key words. So far in this lesson, we've talked about the genitive case, which helps us understand possession. We've talked about the dative case used for the indirect object, a keyword of two. We've talked about the case endings, the definite article, and the full paradigm. We have yet to touch on um, uh, the noun rules. Uh, these rules help make sense of these charts and to note a couple of uh, additional paradigms before we're finished with this lesson. We've learned three noun rules already. That stems ending in alpha or eta, our first declension, in omicron, our second declension. We've learned that neutered nouns have identical nominative and accusative cases in each number. And we've thirdly learned that almost all neuters use alpha in the nominative and accusative plural. Let's summarize the three uh, noun rules that came from this lesson. First of all, we noted form-wise that in the dative singular, the yoda subscripts, if possible. And in the first and second declension, that is possible because we're dealing with a noun. However, in the second declension, that vowel lengthens from omicron to omega, and that's rule number five. Vowels often change their length. They'll ablaut, they'll get longer, sometimes they'll get shorter, sometimes they'll even disappear. Rule number six, in the genitive and dative, the masculine and neuter will always be identical. So, two is the article for the genitive singular masculine and the genitive singular neuter. To for the dative singular masculine and neuter, tone for the genitive plural masculine and neuter, and twice for the dative plural masculine and neuter. Once in a while, uh, and this happens with proper names in particular, uh, the Greek word does not completely inflect and a very prominently used word in the New Testament, Jesus, is one example. Uh, Jesus is the nominative. Jesu is the genitive. But Jesu is also the dative. And Jesun is the accusative. Now, it's pretty easy to see the nominative, genitive, and accusative, but not the dative. 
However, remember, proper names always have an article. And so the article never lies. If you see Yesu and it has a toe in front of it, you know it's dative singular. To Jesus, rather than of Jesus, which would be to Yesu. The other pattern with which we must deal is actually the standard pattern for first declension nouns. First declension nouns in alpha change to eta in the genitive and dative, except after epsilon, yoda, or rho. All the examples we've had previously where they have stayed as alpha in the genitive and dative have been words where the, gen, the, the, uh, stem, or the stem vowel follows um, epsilon, yoda, or rho, and those were chosen to avoid the, this initial confusion. Uh, so in the singular, one, the, the two standard patterns are eta, 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 and alpha, eta, eta, alpha, with, of course, the plurals all being alphas. However, there are also a few where the stem has epsilon, yoda, or rho, where, you, where there is uh, alpha, alpha, alpha. So doxa here, doxa, doxase, uh, doxe, uh, doxon, uh, that's a very typical uh, first declension alpha uh, pattern. And the hora, uh, horas, hora, horan is more unusual. Um, but it was easier to teach earlier. So hopefully this isn't too confusing. Again, this is why we learn the endings and we only note whether the stem vowel is alpha, eta, or omicron. We're not really worried about whether it's an alpha or eta. As long as it's one or the other, it's first declension. We've come to the end now of this rather long lesson on the genitive and dative cases. We've looked at case endings, the definite article, some noun rules, and a couple of additional paradigms. Um, having mastered these forms and the vocabulary for the lesson, uh, you'll be ready to start doing some more translating. And the sentences will become more interesting because they'll be a bit, bit more complex with possessives and indirect objects.